action, I see a lot of interest being generated. And uh, today uh, we have had three talks so far. And uh, first, let me just quickly introduce to what the series is about. Uh, uh, three consortia and society have come together. First is Bacteriophage Research Consortium, IBRC. And I'm Ubi Vajpayee, by the way, <laughs> in case I've not introduced myself ever. Uh, and uh, IBRC, then the uh, Open Source Pharma Foundation, uh, and uh, in collaboration with the Indian Faith Society called SBRT, uh, we are organizing this uh, series of uh, talks by clinicians. And the aim is that uh, you know people get to hear from those who have delivered the therapy and learn more about the challenges and prospects. So today we have with us uh, Dr. Uh, um, Gopal Nath, and he's not, uh, he does not need much introduction, at least to the Indian audience, and I think for uh, abroad also. Uh, Dr. Gopal Nath is an MBBS from Allahabad and MD and PhD microbiology from Banaras Hindu University. His research area is salmonella, gut microbiome, and bacteriophage therapy. He has got experience of about 38 years in medical microbiology, teaching in medical microbiology. And he's a pioneer in the field of clinical phage therapy in the country. And also he's the founder and secretary of the Society for Bacteriophage Research and uh, Therapy, SBRT. And he was the first one to establish uh, that chronic salmonella type infections can lead to malignant transformation in hepatobiliary biliary tract. Uh, he has uh, about uh, one, 290 research articles with uh, more than 11,297 citations. Uh, currently, he is uh, carrying out different aspects of clinical applications of bacteriophage therapy, especially chronic wound healing. And uh, his forte is in safe dose determination in case of septicemia and in treating autobrewery syndrome or obesity. Um, with that, uh, I would like to welcome Dr. Gopal Nath. And uh, the, the format of the session is that he will give a talk for about uh, half an hour, 40 minutes, and then we'll have question answer sessions. And all are welcome to send in their questions in the chat. So I welcome you all. And thank you, Dr. Gopal Nath, so much for joining in and for presenting and sharing your experience with all of us. Thank you very much, Dr. Urmi. It's really nice to be here. This is our own uh, forum. It is. Uh, so, uh, it is nice to see all of you, the youngers and the elders also to whom I have talked. I, I sometimes met them there in the past. Dr. Anupam Verma is there. We met in the in this conference at the Delhi. So I have to speak on Campesinate Fast Therapy Experience from India. This is the title as we discuss and we decided. And the I would request Dr. Ruby when we are, I'm crossing the time, maybe 40 minutes it will take. So please stop me because it may be longer. But I will try to finish within 40 minutes. And then... Uh, sure, sir. Uh, because we are uh, talking in reference to India, so let, we cannot forget about the Hankin, Hanbury Hankin, uh, the, that uh, year of the uh, 19, uh, 1896, when he uh, proved that there is something in River Ganges and some certificate is being shown here, you can see, it is Agra, India. So the, he and the bacteriophage therapy started from India itself only. So we should be proud of this. And we are just taking that uh, flag ahead. And this was published in 1896. And uh, he found that there is a paradox in Ganga. So he, that was the term used, the Ganga paradox, that the Ganges water cleans the water. And then the, you have to, uh, the, the people are taking it as a very sacred river and it is dirty also. So something is there which is leading to this. And the next person who worked in India is the Felix Darrell. And uh, you see he is French-Canadian microbiologist and he may be taken as the father of the bacteriophage therapy or bacteriophage research. And uh, it is important that what he said, in nature, every time that bacteria do something, a bacteriophage interferes the bacteria or provokes modification of their action. Thus, the aim of microbiologists is to study these actions, reactions, and to select the bacteriophage which attack harmful bacteria in order to bring about rapid destruction of 
whenever this is causing some problem. So the vectorophage inquiry, and, and, and he's the person till date, it is said, uh, we, you may remember in, uh, we uh, organized one international conference at BHU in uh, uh, 2017, and Dr. William Summer was there, one of the very elderly person who works on the history of the uh, medicine. So he informed us that this was the largest till date uh, uh, clinical trial anywhere in the world on the vectorophage therapy of Vibrio calorie uh, uh, cholerae way back in uh, 1931 to 34, something like this. And you see, uh, the Harrell was invited to India in 1926. The funding was given by uh, phase, uh, uh, funded by Indian Research Fund. And then the uh, he was supposed to work and he worked in, the, in Punjab. And there was another hospital, Campbell Hospital. Now it is NRS Hospital at uh, Calcutta. Uh, Neil Ratan Sarkar Hospital. We know many of the product of that college where my teacher also had BHU. And then a, a large field trial was started in Assam. A new phase lab was established at Patna and trial at Puri was also started and also at Patna Medical College. And then 1933 to 35 control trial at Campbell Hospital was started and the researcher was Dr. Pasricha. And in 1936, Cholera Advisory Committee report was submitted and shall be showing you some of the results also. You can see here that the this there were two uh, areas. One was the Nogao district and another was the um, uh, Habib Ganj. So this dotted one is the Habib Ganj and the... Uh, Con uh, the, this continuous line is the Naugao and the Naugao, the vectorophase therapy was given. It was basically added to the, uh, to the uh, well water and people were drinking here. Yeah. And while in, in case of Habig buns, uh, the vectorophages were not added to the water. And you can see that there is the, the mortality came down here in case of the Naugao where the vectorophages were added. And this remained still high in case of the Habib Ganj. So this was the effect that was seen. But there were certain issues at that time because uh, the many of the Vibrio cholerae were non-agglutinable. Maybe they were not non one actually. So vectorophages being very strain specific, that might be the reason about this. And here you can see in the, the highlighted one, the Vibrio positive and agglutination positive means Vibrio O1. Uh, the mortality of the untreated was 21.1%, while in case of phase treated, it was only 6.8. So that was really effective and it could be proved at that time also. So we started our journey after DHRLs. Uh, I'm just coming to my work that we started in 2005. And initially, we were working on the animal model of bacteria and the local wound also. So the first paper we published. Uh, the Pseudomonas erythrocyta biofilm formed in the uh, wound model, and then we treated successfully. Then we jumped to the uh, another uh, study which we published in uh, 2000. Uh, sorry, we published here, and then it, it was I think 2019. Yes, 2019, and then we had only three bacteria we focused. Because we are having the bacteriophages against that, those three bacteria only, Staph aureus, Escherichia coli, and Pseudomonas erigenosa. So the wound who were yielding these bacteria, actually, we prepared the bacteriophages and we started the therapy. And then we found that the after uh, the application of a ninth, uh, on ninth day and onwards, the many of the wounds became sterile and uh, there was the uh, really encouraging result. And you can see also there was significant uh, reduction in these uh, Bates-Jensen uh, criteria, that is wound assessment criteria is decided by the Bates-Jensen, the surgeons used to this, uh, use this criteria. And you can see the volume, depth, edge, undermining, necrotic tissue, necrotic tissue amount, exudate type, exudate amount, surrounding skin color, everything came down significantly when we compared from day one to day nine. You can see this is highly significant. So this was really very encouraging uh, and that was done in those cases which were not responding to treatment for six uh, weeks of the conventional therapy. 
So then after this, we took a case control study, actually a case series uh, where we were uh, just taking or isolating any bacteria which was uh, causing the infection to the wound infection. And then we prepared the customized phases and then we used that. And this paper was published in 21. And you can see. So we took a total of 45 cases out of which 37 healed the percentage within 90 days. The percentage of the healing was 82.2% complete healing. I shall be showing you some pictures also with the some failures, but these were not actually the failures. If you see the one, this one with the very large surface area with little decrease in surface area, but it seems it may take many more months. So after three, uh, 90 days, it may heal and it healed. Actually, we followed later on. This is the old story. And there were three cases which could be cured later, data not shown here. So three cases later healed, and this one was take, uh, took a longer time. And some of these cases were, one was the venous ulcer, so it was not, um, vascular ulcer do not respond well until this, you are correcting this, uh, uh, this vascular problem. And one patient underwent amputation due to astromalytic changes, and one patient lost during the follow-up, and one patient uh, with colonization with the different bacteria due to his poor personal hygiene. He was basically a chronic alcoholic, not taking the commands which were we were just suggesting him, a policeman. And the duration of the healing and diabetes mellitus stasis, you can see that uh, the, the non-diabetic patients, the healing was faster. So 21.1% of the patient, there was complete healing after 21 days, three weeks. And while in this case, and diabetic patients, the healing basically started late, but the, the healing rate was quite satisfactory, 69.2% and 63.2%. So diabetes le leads to a bit delayed healing, but there is healing. And here also you can see the uh, we, when we analyze different bacteria, we found that Klebsiella pneumoniae is a bit difficult. It takes longer duration, longer time for the healing. And they, I'm showing you one case which we took in this one case uh, series study. This is 66 year male diabetic for more than 15 years, suffering from chronic wound for last six years. And he has undergone several rounds of conventional debridement, local antiseptics, local and systemic antibiotics, but, but without any fruitful result. So he came to us uh, and we included him in our study and rather he suffered uh, amputation of two great toes, uh, two toes also. So this is the picture. So this was the status when we he visited to us and then we started, we isolated the bacteria by Staph aureus. This is May 2019. And you can see this, we started the therapy. What we do is after making the uh, customized phases cocktail, we just simply uh, do uh, soak the gauze piece, trial gauze piece and putting over the surface of the wound overnight uh, on alternate days. And you just see the progress, how it is progressing. This is uh, after one week, third week. This is on 22nd May 2019. This is 29th May 2019. Now this is 6th June. And you can see the healing, the, 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 this, uh, this deep wound hole has been going away. And then you can see this is the 13th June, almost healed. And here also you can see uh, 20th June, 26th June, 2nd July. And complete healing is here on, you can see after 90 days or within 90 days, that was the 8th of the July. So the patient uh, uh, remained, uh, means we followed this uh, patient for more than six months and there was no recurrence of the uh, wound again. So this is the case, this first one. The second case is the, second case is a, really a, yeah, a known to me actually, he was, he is the younger brother of one of the plastic surgeon who was senior to me. He is a 50 year old uh, diabetic and reported to me, I think 2008 and having chronic ulcer for two, point, uh, two and a half years. And 
two efforts of skin grafting was done by his brother plastic surgeon but because the biofilm was there infection was there so without any effect so you see just how what we did we did the same thing the sterile uh, gauze piece soaked in these customized phases putting there and taking the weekly photographs of that patient which did not heal for two and a half years now you can see the region This is January 29th and next you can see in March 8th. So within 90 days, there was complete healing. So the patient is still all right after so many years. It was done in March 2016 to 2019. So after this, the third study we took, the uh, randomized double blind control trial, which has been concluded very recently, two months ago, and uh, the thesis is about to be submitted. This is the part of the PhD program. And uh, we collected the, and uh, irrespective of the diabetic status, there were certain exclusion criteria and that we followed that they are, there should not be the tubercular or the vascular ulcer. Only pressure ulcers and the chronic infected ulcers were included in the study. And the percentage distribution of isolated bacteria, the most common was the staph aureus. You can see the next was Klebsiella pneumoniae and third was Pseudomonas aeruginosa. So uh, this Klebsiella, uh, the, these three bacteria were the most common which were covering almost 60-70% of the odd infections. And there are mixed infections as well. The MDR status, you, if you see the Margula Margani, uh, all the all of them were, and they, the MDR was defined as the they should be resistant to at least three different class of the antibiotics. And you can see Staph aureus, almost ninety percent are the MDR. In case of Klebsiella pneumoniae, almost all of them are MDR. Pseudomonas aeruginosa, hundred percent MDR. Escherichia coli, a bit less, maybe it, is, it should be around ninety. And Proteus mirabilis may be 70, and all these are almost the same. Cytobacter friendi is looking a bit 50% uh, of them were sensitive. So, this was the uh, case, and uh, none of the antibiotics are going to work because there was biofilm formation along with this uh, AMR uh, status of the bacteria. So, we just uh, had a study plan and you can see the plan that we included the 30 cases in the intervention one and the 30 cases in the uh, control one. The randomization was done and the, the patient were blinded and also the surgeon was not knowing that what is being given to his patient actually. So that's why it became double blind. And the, uh, we did not inform the statistician if he was blinded, then it will be uh, triple blind. It was registered in the CTRI. And this was the, I think, second study where we uh, registered this one in the clinical trial of the Indian registry. And then we continued with this. And uh, I shall be showing you the result at the end. Uh, I'm showing you one of the patient who are on conventional therapy, a bit uh, scary pictures. You can see. We did not give the face therapy, it was in the control and with the increasing time, the wound, uh, wound was uh, uh, further worsening. So this was 6 January 22 and this is 13 January 22, second week, third week you can see 27th January is still uh, going uh, worse and the, this is the 3rd February and this is at the end of 12 week, if you see 3rd March, it was even worse and uh, surgeons were suggesting for the amputation. We said as the our waiting time is 90 days, so we said that now we'll be taking on the ethical ground that these patients will be treated with the, uh, because we were making the, isolating the bacteria in the beginning and also making the customized phase in the beginning, but we are having with us. And then after 90 days, we started the therapy and you see what is happening. You can see after two weeks of the, uh, this, uh, Phase therapy. This was the situation of that uh, that uh, wound. If you go back, you can see this was this this one. So now it is after fifteen days. This is the picture. After four weeks, after one month, you can uh, you are having this picture, and then after six week, one and a half month, this is quite almost healed. Some some uh, uh, ulcers are here, and after eight weeks, there was complete cure. Complete healing was there. So, uh, uh, the, there are a few more cases which I shall be showing. This was in the vector phase group. So, we started the therapy in the beginning. 
and you can see the result. So this is the third week. You can see there is healthy granulation tissue and here uh, this uh, infectious slough and uh, dread necrotic tissues are here in the beginning, but now it has been cleared. And science is also becoming a bit smaller. So this is uh, on 20th, 20th June. This is still smaller. It is improving. This has come to this level and there is almost complete cure. So this is happening and... Uh, this is the typical case of the uh, this uh, necrotic fasciitis, something like this. And uh, surgeons, he came to us and uh, means it was included because surgeons were telling that we are going for the, because uh, the patient will be going for the amputation. So you do whatever you can do. So we just took it and then we started the therapy. It came up to this level. But uh, we suggested because the area is very large, so you go now for the skin grafting because this is healthy granulation uh, tissue also and the surface has become sterile. But he uh, left the um, uh, us without informing us. So, But we had a very good uh, improvement in this one also and there was no need of the amputation. So this is the uh, finding which we had and you can see that and the, all those criteria of the Bates Johnson size, depth, edge, undermining, and also epithelialization, granulation tissue. If you compare within day one to day 21, and you can find that this is the significant difference has occurred in this case in the treatment group. So, the wound characteristic at different stages of patient in bacteriophage group by Bates Johnson wound assessment tool, and all these criteria, there was significant improvement in third week. It is not that much in the first and second week, but third week was definitely very significant. And then when we are going for the another one, where the, the cases of the controls, you can find that here in this group, there is no tip change. None of them is having any difference. There is no difference in the size, depth, edge, where the conventional therapy was given. No, no phases were given here. So I think there are none of them. This is the minimum point zero, uh, zero point zero eight, zero point zero eight. So the, the difference was not significant. So there was no improvement at all. So and when we see what was the status of the bacterial colonization, monobacterial, bibacterial, polybacterial. If you see so and and then the, we followed those cases. We can you can see that at the end of three months, twenty eight of them became sterile. And complete healing was also with the 28 cases. While in this case, four of them became sterile, but there was no healing. These four were, there was this became the sterile, but there was no healing. And irrespective of the status of the uh, bacterial uh, types, mono, R by, R polybacterial infection, there was no problem with the healing because you have to use the cocktail of the bacteriophages against all those bacteria. If there is mixed infection, then you have to use the cocktail of the mixed bacteriophages. So 28 became sterile, two remained as such because the actually wound size was very large in this case. So it was not within 90 days. It might take more or some other issue might maybe there. And uh, this only four became sterile, but there was no healing in this case. So if we do the pairwise comparison, you can find out that the placebo group, the control group and bacteriophage group you can see the difference in all these parameters. There was significant difference with the bacteriophage therapy after the on the ninetieth day of the therapy uh, of the of this uh, uh, registration of these cases. So uh, the the size also changed significantly. Patient on placebo actually that increased. If you see, this is seventy four point zero. The average mean size again increased while in this case, this is 0 0.47. It has come down from 34 to 0 0.47, less than 0.5. While in this case, 46, it has increased to 74 in the conventional therapy. So they are not going to heal with this one, but bacteriophage will definitely lead to the healing of these cases. And if you see here, the same thing is uh, shown here. Uh, with the bacteriophage therapy, the blue line, it is coming down like this, 0 0.48, and it is the size is in, uh, keeps on increasing. So the 
case processing summary and median of the sterility, you can see that the 93.3% of the cases, they became sterile and there were, they, all of them healed also. So in this case, you can see the, uh, uh, because none of the, them healed, so we cannot make the, uh, uh, this comparison here. But in case of placebo, they, only four became sterile without healing. So 28 became sterile, 93.33%. These 20, 93% were the healing rate also, cure rate also. But only sterility could be obtained here. And maybe they, they may go for the skin grafting, other things. But there was no healing of the wound. So another study, we took case control, again registered in the um, this clinical CTRI. And this was the traumatic acute wound. So I shall be showing you only two of the pictures because time we are running out of time. Actually, it will take a lot of time. So here you can see we started the therapy and then it becomes usually uh, because all these traumatic wounds, they are having the swelling with the road traffic accident. They are having the dust and many things there and they are definitely uh, contaminated. So these cases were having the were given the conventional therapy along with this. We added in cases bacteriophages uh, uh, against them. After the customized bacteriophages were prepared, it took uh, about seven days. And you can see on 21 day, the 21st day, the healthy granulation uh, tissue has, are formed. If the surface becomes sterile, they can go for the skin grafting, superficial skin grafting. You can see the skin grafting has been done here. In this case, we did the same thing, but there was no need of the skin grafting. This is the amputation at the knee joint, and there was spontaneous uh, healing of the whole wound and the skin has taken care of all these things. This has been covered by the itself without any skin grafting. So in this case, if you see the full granulation tissue, mean days, it took 15.89 days and final intervention could be done on 25th day. While in case of control, full granulation tissue, it took more than 23 days. These are the acute cases, actually. Acute wounds, not the chronic wound, not associated with the, usually with the biofilm, maybe. And then, Final intervention could be done on 43 days. So it was significantly different. So if you do the phase therapy of acute wound also, this is also very encouraging and it is very, uh, you can say that the money and time saving also. In cases uh, when, where we gave the phase therapy, you can see the average expenditure is coming this 38,500. While in case of... Uh, uh, con conventional therapy takes longer 45 days. In this case, it is 25 days. So accordingly, if you calculate a rough estimate, it becomes 1,36,500 plus minus 22,000. So this is very high, huge, and with the lot of uh, misery and the uh, uh, money loss also to the patient and this one. This study in, uh, recently been done. Actually, this is a case report. And uh, these are, there are two cases I shall be showing where uh, bacteriophages has been given on the camposanate ground, uh, not the local use, rather they have been systematically used. And this is first case done at the uh, Guntur Hospital, Shiri Hospital is there, and there is Dr. K.K. Chakravarti. And uh, he just got some information about me. He wrote me, I said that you have the consent of the two treating physicians and the patient and then I'm ready to give and they flew to me and we prepared the phases and then started. The, this is the case. A 60 year old obese woman, COPD, exacerbations and type 2 our renal failure was there. Uh, respiratory failure, sorry. Hypercapnic and incubate, intubated due to severe bronchospasma and hypoxia. Brief period of bradycardia, severe hypotension, pulselessness. And uh, sometimes uh, 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 once uh, she has to go for the CPR also, uh, but the poor Glasgow coma scale and GCS continued to be very low. So uh, the case it was really very serious. And then some one of the person flew to me, took the bacteria there from their lab. Then we uh, tried to uh, isolate the bacteriophages, bacteriophages as fast as we can do and then making them the endotoxin free. And it was taken back uh, within three or four days, I think. And then uh, the therapy was started. And this patient later on, because there were several admissions made and several times she was discharged with the COPD. 
So she developed ventilator associated pneumonia later, which improved with antibiotics. And tracheostomy done, shifted to ward after weaning from the mechanical ventilation to BiPAP. And then recurrent VAP recovered with multiple antibiotic courses initially. After a few months, her uh, bronchoalveolar lavage culture grew MDR acinobacter lofi on antibiotics as per IDST. Progressive illness, chest X-ray, bilateral infiltrates were there, increased WBC count was there, and tracheal tube and uh, this uh, perfusion uh, uh, pulmonary function ratio dropped to less than 200. New onset fever and hypotension requiring inotropes was also and she was shifted to ICU. Considered phase therapy on the compassionate ground after ethical committee clearance and required consent in view of the XDR uh, acinetobacter lofi because nothing could have been done without the antibiotics were not able to do anything. So the therapy was started and this is the condition uh, on different days of her admission. This is 93 days, 104 days and 112 days. And culture was positive, the bronchioliberal lavage was positive for the uh, acinetobacter. Here also it was positive. Initially it was MDR, later it became XDR. The patient was kept on the cholestine and the, the uh, 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 this cholestine and minocycline and sulbactam, cephidaroquol and cholestine, but without any improvement. And then we started the bacteriophage therapy on 20, uh, uh, 1 to 3rd days, 123rd days of the admission. That was the 28th July uh, 2023. And when we started the phase therapy, IV plus inhalation through nebulization and also cholestine was given along with that one. And this uh, bile and uh, blood culture was done. And uh, then uh, when systemic antibiotic were given, so there was improvement. Phase match making was done by we. I, we had actually already one uh, thesis was going on. So we were having fifty different phases uh, against seventy clinical isolates of Acinobacter species, of which fifty three were uh, carbapenem resistant. Out of these phases, we tested and we got that some of them were working. So we made the cocktail of three phases, a volume of ten microliter of each phase. Uh, lytic phases with concentration of 10 power 9 PFU per ml was spotted on MHA plate with lawn culture and bacteria with an appro uh, approximate concentration of 6 into 10 power 8 CFU per ml. The plates were uh, observed for clear zone. And then we found these three phases, BHU6, BHU14 and BHU16, and they were transported to the hospital at Guntur. So this was the schedule which we gave the uh, to the patient, Dr. K.K. Chakravarti. This was presented also in the microcon recently at Lucknow. So 100, the concentration was this much. 100 microliter was given IV twice for three consecutive days and 100 microliter of inhalation, ultrasonic nebulizer via tracheostomy four times a day for seven days. And we spaced two hours between IV and nebulization to avoid endotoxemia because sudden uh, uh, administration of the high doses of bacteriophages may lead some problem. So we just tried to avoid this one. So these were the uh, things which we used. So this was the clinical trend what we got. You can see that uh, we use the bacteriophage somewhere here. And you can see this is the uh, temperature, the blue one. This is the uh, perfusion, uh, pulmonary function, this uh, this one. So initially it was 210 and then it dropped down here just where, before we started. Again, it improved and it came to 346, 337 and 328. If we see the CRP level, CRP, you, this, this line is showing CRP from 1012, it has gone to 42. This has also improved. And then uh, fraction of the uh, infused oxygen uh, is the, again, the, the demand has gradually gone down to 40 and total WBC count uh, is the, uh, this one, it has gone to normal, uh, ultimately it became 6,000 and while it was initially 23,000. So this, there was a tremendous improvement and this improvement occurred within uh, two days only. 
So this is the X-ray chest. You can see the pneumonic patches throughout the lungs. And then after phase therapy, there was the clearance. Adverse effect, when we administered the phase, uh, initially in within one hour, there was the um, tachycardia and also hyper, hyper, hypertension, but that could be managed within five minutes. And the phases were start for the time being. And then the phase therapy again was resumed IV one day later and with the escalating dose from 10 power 7 to 10 power 8 per day. Then resumed inhalation doses and continued IV twice a day for three days and nebulization QID for seven days. And mild, ultimately, and then in the end, we could find that there was mild thrombocytopenia. The reason may be two. One is because of the septicemia or maybe high load of viremia because sometimes viruses also lead to the thrombocytopenia. So this is the first documented case of bacteriophage therapy in India to manage severe uh, ventilator-associated pneumonia, secondary to MDR, uh, acinobacter laufey. The therapy was well tolerated except for mild thrombocytopenia and trans amenitis, probably secondary to endotoxemia. So, uh, because uh, I shall be going in a very um, quick way, the second case, which we are still doing and it is going on in uh, Varanasi itself, systemic use of face cocktail on a component ground. This is second case. A case with septicemia associated with orthopedic implant. So the history goes like this. This 60-year-old lady was undergone the following events. In 2008, road traffic accident fractured the neck femur of the lady. She had an implant, but it was painful. So it was replaced in 2011 after three years. And she developed pain. And it was quite already. All right. She developed pain in the hip joint four months ago and was detected with a cyst near. Recently, she uh, was detected with a cyst near the hip joint, near the implant. She was operated on October 22nd, 2023 and discharged. She became febrile and was admitted again to the same hospital on November 11th, 2023. So not very, means maybe one month ago. And then his son is a scientist at DVT. So somehow he came to know that we are having this facility and he contacted us. And he writes like this, my mother surgery to remove cyst near the uh, her right hip implant has been infected with MDR strain of Clebsola pneumonia. She is admitted in Apex Hospital of Varanasi. Can it be treated with fast therapy? How to proceed? Uh, it can, and it can be treated. So she had uh, surgery on 2nd October to remove the cyst near the uh, right hip joint. Implant has been infected. So she was admitted on 11th. She, he again writes that bacteriophage cocktail was inoculated two days after cleaning the wound. Two unit blood was infused due to anemic condition and blood loss. Doctor has kept her in ICU for supervision. So I asked then when it was given, he told that 2.30 2, uh, 2 p.m. because I was in contact with the orthopedic surgeon and uh, the physician there. BP, and then he said that the BP was high now but it is now controlled. Heartbeat is high. It is around 140. Same condition which happened in the Guntur patient. And however, on December 5th, the what happened that he is telling that the total leukocyte count has come down to 15.8 thousand from 28 thousand on Sunday and 21 thousand on Saturday. So within a day, the leukocyte came down uh, to 15,800 from 28,000. So this was really drastic uh, improvement in the patient. This was the case. And this was the uh, sensitivity report. You can see that even cholesterol is not active here. All the antibiotics are resistant. And basically for cholesterol, you have to test with the broad dilution method, not with the DISC one. So DISC is, even if it is giving the sensitive uh, zone, but it should not be considered that the this is sensitive. And this was the, after opening, this was the implant and this is the hip joint where it, the infection has occurred. The two treating physicians were Dr. Swaroop Singh and Dr. Santosh Singh at the, uh, there. And we obtained the uh, written consent of the two physicians and the patient party that is with us. And you can see that I made this table. If you see 13 November, the... Uh, the blood was collected at 6.46 a.m. The blood urea was 110 at that time and serum creatinine is 3.3. The CRP was 71.4 and the 
pro calcitonin level was 5.23 it is very quite high and it shows the severe infection and possibly septicemia after major surgery but if you if you see on second uh, this uh, december the total count was 28000 and then we started the therapy here vector phase therapy started two units of blood transfusion on the 3rd december and after this the count came here 21000 then on 5th december it came 15800 6th 15460 7th 12800 8th the counting was not done on that, on that day on 9th october you can see it has come down to this and on 14th october uh, uh, december it has come down to normal here from here it has been we come, i mean on 12th october uh, december it has come to the normal level and then this is also very important that the uh, this uh, procalcitonin uh, which shows the uh, infection the severity of the infection that has also come down to 0.29 uh, on the after the uh, you see after 5 days of the therapy so this is very significant and also blood urea came down to normal level on the december 12th 30 and serum creatine also from 3.3 .3, this is quite high it should be less than uh, 1 or 1.2. This has come down to normal. So this was the tremendous improvement. And the uh, uh, we are still uh, uh, having uh, observing this patient. If anything is happening, we are having ready vectrophages with us. And uh, I think, and she was actually having the septicemia. Her urine was yielding the pure Klebsiella pneumonia, the same strain. And uh, she was uh, really uh, very serious. And uh, maybe if you are not taking this case within uh, 24-48 hours, she might have died. So this is the success story of the bacteriophage therapy. So we started the journey with the uh, animal model, mouse model. Then we took the uh, only three bacteria which were causing, which could isolate the bacteriophages at that time. Uh, Seromonas, Staph aureus and Klebsiella. Then, uh, then we shifted to the case, case series study. Of the uh, Dr. Devraj, that was the, he was doing MS general surgery. Later, we took the case control double blind randomized trial to prove that this is really uh, doing the healing, and we got a success in almost 94% of the cases. And then we had a very uh, successful story with the acute traumatic wounds. And then these two cases, although we have done many more cases, but the proper uh, uh, this documentation could have been done in these two cases, the one Guntur and this one, the present one is going on with us. So this is the total story which we are doing. Apart from this, we have already uh, standardized the doses for the septicemia and the urinary tract infection, especially chronic prostatitis. If need be, we are able to supply. Only issue with us is that the regulatory bodies are not permitting. Another thing is that we need to have the well-characterized, uh, the AMR gene-free, virulence gene-free phages, and the uh, the composition of the phase cocktail should be uh, endotoxin-free or any other toxins which should not be there. So that we could do. We are doing very well with the uh, membrane dialysis. There is no need for going for the ultracentrifugation. So this is very simple, very cheap, and it can be achieved any time. So with these, uh, uh, thank you very much for giving me this opportunity and uh, be, uh, presenting the all these findings before you, uh, whatever we have done till date, starting from 2005 to 2023. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you so much, Dr. Popalnath. This was an excellent uh, uh, journey of phage therapy in your lab under your supervision. And congratulations on the, especially on the last two cases, which is... Um, uh, besides topical application, you have gone way ahead with systemic application of phages and pretty much successful. So that gives a lot of hope. And I think uh, you are a phage researcher and clinician both. And I think that helps a lot. Uh, and also it was interesting to find that you are the way you're tracking the parameters. And though these are few cases, but perhaps this can be scaled up and uh, the kind of uh, tracking of parameters that you see post and before post therapy can be very helpful in predicting the success of phage therapy for patients. So thank you so much for sharing all your uh, experience and the case studies, very recent. In fact, one is ongoing. So wish you luck and the patient also good luck. 
And as Thank you can you. see, a very good attendance and a lot of questions. So <clears throat> may I start taking questions? Uh, yeah, sure, sure, sure. It's my pleasure. Okay, can I start? Yeah. Hello, yes, sir, please. Go ahead. Yes, sir. Uh, <clears throat> Well, Dr. Gopal Nath, uh, first of all, heartiest congratulations for uh, the great success. I can see a good journey between 2020 and 23 now. Hmm? In fact, 24 now. Hmm? Yeah, it's, yeah. A good, it's a very good progress. I think I've discussed this you uh, earlier also. Yes, sir. Uh, you are a very brave person to take, uh, you know, very difficult cases and you have shown success in those difficult cases. My question is that, uh, can we have a system that those difficult cases do not arise? In other words, right at the initial stage when the wound is uh, getting into trouble, we should have some system of uh, getting therapy. That's question number one. Number two, uh, you talked about orthopedic uh, implants. And I can tell you, I mean, uh, one of my relations uh, had undergone hip uh, replacement. And uh, during her surgery period, there were several cases of infections. And she was also affected. I think we need to develop a mechanism uh, to completely stop uh, such infections which are coming during the implantation. And similarly, I'm not talking expanding that. We'll yeah, discuss yeah. that further, uh, other details. These three questions. Okay, sir. Very nice questions, actually. And um, the first question is that to stop or to prevent the development of such serious situation, maybe we are having the uh, bacteriophage uh, therapy uh, as we are using the antibiotics nowadays. So I'm not telling that we are going to replace it but we may have the antibiotic uh, phase antibiotic combination or synergistic effect. So maybe we are replacing the use of 50% antibiotics with the bacteriophages and the regulatory bodies are, uh, um, they are, they are uh, means permitting us to use. So initially if the infection is occurring, then the, the, the serious condition, the uh, wound condition is not going to happen. The other thing in the implant condition, we know that there are few bacteria, especially escape organisms, which are multidrug resistant or the PDR. And if you are using the uh, bacteriophage cocktail as prophylactic during the surgery, as we do uh, during the surgery, we are giving the broad spectrum antibiotic just before surgery and after surgery also. So same thing can be given. These phases are basically non uh, means uh, they are really not causing any adverse effect and they are not uh, uh, means problematic to us because uh, I have not explained in that my study, but now I can share this uh, forum that the bacteriophages we are excreting daily in our urine, in our saliva, none of the body fluid is free of bacteriophages because yes. the gut microbiota, which we are having all these bacterial population is basically controlled by the corresponding bacteriophages. As D. Harrell said in the beginning, if bacteria are doing something, phages are doing the same thing. And we are basically the planet which are having huge number of the bacteria. That's why we are having huge number of the phages. And the other thing is, sir, the uh, we have done also in the rabbit model, there is no uh, big question of the appearance of neutralizing antibody. The reason being that these phages, if they are uh, against the our commensal bacteria, so they are with us since beginning, since our birth. So that's, our, that's why they are taken as our own part and parcel of body and our immune system is not responding to them. So these are the two uh, things which I think that it can be done. And I, I'm sure one day it will be done, sir. Yeah. Well, we'll discuss on that later. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Welcome, sir. Welcome. Uh, can I add? Yeah, yeah. Yes. So congratulations, Dr. Gopalnath. As always, it was wonderful presentation and I'm happy to see especially the last two cases um, which have really opened the way forward for many of the pulmonologists. And also in COVID, we were looking for alternatives where we were just uh, so much of antibiotics were poured in. So I think it is a very, very promising approach. And I must add here that one of my former uh, you know, clinician told me that why wait till the end that when we had nothing left, 
I mean, maybe it is better to start using it uh, maybe in the beginning itself and save many more patients who can be either, uh, as you said, can be given synergistic uh, treatment along with antibiotics or can be given where possible, um, you know, just bacteriophage therapy. And I think uh, now there is a need to kind of have the, uh, the ministry and the regulatory authorities must permit because the concept of uh, proof is already there. And once it is there, we should be able to get the permission from regulatory authorities because it is becoming a major question. And many of the questions in chat box are why only compassionate therapy? So that is a major hurdle as far as India is concerned and many other countries also. I think um, we must take it to the higher authorities, which we have already taken, made an attempt. And we should be able to take a proper regulatory you know, permission to carry on with this. And that too, with our in-house um, phages which are from India, which you are doing already. So very commendable job. And I just wanted to make that comment. Thank you Thank for your presentation. Dr. Urmi, you are not audible. Yeah, sorry about that. Hmm. Yes, thank you, ma'am, for your question. Um, so, sir, I'm taking now questions from the chat, and I see some of the questions have already been answered, but still I'd like to address a, a, a person who's asked. So, Lalit Mohan was asking about, uh, in your all these cases, were you, given, were you giving antibiotics along with phages? Maybe you can say yes or no. Yeah, yeah. Actually, you see, uh, still people have to believe the physicians are thinking that there may be something wrong. There are two things. The Even at the sub doses, we are doing this one on in vitro study of the biofilm formation and disruption of the biofilm. There is synergy, synergy between the many antibiotics and the phages. So that synergy is one advantage. Another is that clinicians don't want to take any risk on the phase only. We do believe that this is going to act, but we have found that the bacteriophages and antibiotic synergy is definitely there. And even at a lower MIC level also, they, they cure it. That has been proved. We are about to publish all these cases. And we have looked for all the escape organisms. Ivy wants to ask, Ivy Mitai, uh, she is, again, as Dr. Rama has already asked, that uh, it's only compassionate or there are regulatory frameworks. So as Dr. Kopanlath has already answered, there's no regulatory framework as such. But yes, on compassionate grounds, uh, they have found a way to deliver therapy. And she's congratulating you. And then we have a question from um, Moshmi. Uh, she wants to know how bacteriophages were prepared and made free from LPS or endotoxins. I think you mentioned that, but I mean, there are people who are asking how are phages isolated for your therapy and how are they purified uh, from endotoxins? I think isolation is the very uh, simple process anybody can do. It's like isolating a bacteria and having the bacterial colony on the plates. But the purification process is definitely difficult and we have faced this uh, uh, this issue with the one of the, actually we are lucky that the first case we treated was the case of osteomyelitis of orthopedic surgeon from Lalitpur. His son was our student and then he went there and he told his father that uh, we can do something and he visited us in 2012. So when we gave the first dose without purification, within 15 minutes he was having fever, pain, nausea and omitting and he told me that something is wrong with the composition. Since he was doctor, so it was and clinician too. So he just uh, gave the feedback every time. When we gave the second dose next day, the same thing happened. So we stopped and we discussed that there is something wrong. Then initially we used the PEG precipitation. We, do, we, we are not having the ultra centrifugation at that time. PEG does something. So later on, we just find out some way that if you are using the membrane dialysis bag, which pore size is 20 nanometer or less than 20 nanometer, phases are usually 200 nanometers. So all these molecules may go out. If you are taking the making the outside environment uh, hypertonic, so these molecules will be going out, only phases will be staying inside after lysing the bacteria. So it, we have tested, we have submitted for the process patenting to the patenting authority recently, maybe two, three months ago, this process. And uh, we have tested that this is the best one. 
So this membrane dialysis can solve the issue. And what we do is simply is that in a beaker or in a flask, you are having the both ends tied, having the bacteriophage composition inside. And uh, the, the dialysis is needed at 4 degrees centigrade. So you just keep in the refrigerator overnight. Right. So, so that, that, that takes. precipitation. Process. Yes. And this uh, interesting question, we saw in your presentation, you had uh, screened about 50 plus pages and got, chose three out of those for your therapy. Yes. So yes. how do you choose? What is your criteria of best pages for treatment? Actually, what we do is uh, the causative bacteria, we are making the lawn and we are dropping all these available phages with us. So out of them, which one is giving the lytic one? So we are uh, just picking up them. And we are having certain uh, in the library also, which are broad spectrum uh, bacteriophages against Klebsiella pneumonia acinetobacter. So they are ready all the time. Uh, we are having with us uh, staph aureus also. Initially, we test with those three, four phases. If they are working, then immediately we give to the patient party. Otherwise, we are again preparing and looking all this. So that takes 48 hours. And this is an interesting question from Arno. He wants to know that sometimes, I mean, is it true uh, whether the sometimes the MDR isolates show resistance to phages while these those which are susceptible to antibiotics are inhibited by phages? Does that happen? Uh, actually, you know, the phase, the mode of action of the phages and the antibiotics are totally different. So they are not basically uh, dependent on each other. But one thing is very much dependent, which we have recently found in the biofilm studies, that if you treat, the, if you give the bacteriophages first, say uh, six hours before or maybe three, four hours before the antibiotics, so the antibiotics start working even if the antibiotics were not working initially. So bacteriophages are basically, probably they are replicating inside and making the uh, usually this is happening with the uh, antibiotics which are acting on the cell wall. So something is being modified in the cell wall so that the, uh, the, the receptors where the antibiotics were unable to bind, now they are able to bind and they are causing the uh, disruption of the cell wall. So this is happening. Yeah. There are about 20 questions, so I'll quickly take them. And so Joseph wants to ask, what was the mode of administration of phages uh, IV or topical and how did you come with the right phase? I think he's just answered that. Yeah. Uh, Titer also has discussed and uh, Dr. Pavan Sharma is very happy with the talk, very impressive talk. And he is saying that uh, looks like one needs a large library of phages to make customized phage cocktail. So how laborious it is to maintain, not make, but maintain such a library. Because we need this uh, all the time. Yes, yes, yes. It is laborious. It needs a lot of manpower, actually. And for that, we are trying. Dr. Rama is there. She has tried to convince the uh, Indian Council of Medical Research people also. We are having the presentation. And then uh, after preparing, after making them the means good laboratory practice and the, the all those phages are basically well characterized genetic, uh, genetically. And then they are free of all those uh, means uh, where uh, the uh, regulatory body is having objections. So those phases with, uh, should be with us. And the other thing is that we can have them in the uh, means uh, liquid form in minus 80 or minus 20. Other issue is that we can go for the lyophilization. I and mean, we are having a lot of phases in our lab, lyophilized one. And lyophilized one, during the process, there is reduction of one log only. So we are having 10 power 10. And when you are doing the life license, it has come down to 10.9. So that is okay. It's not an issue. So preservation is also not a big issue. Only isolation characterization is very um, exhaustive. It takes a lot of uh, time. Shivaji wants to know, I think Shivaji, you also got your answer, uh, the protocol for purification and with antibiotic synergy. So that question has been taken. Vidyut Prakash uh, wants to know, we are aware MDR case is increasing. Uh, so her, his question is, uh, what is the time frame do you see when the phages can be perhaps commercially available for patients in India? It depends on the um, government when they are going to help us. We are having a consortia in the country and we are working all together. The Dr. Rama Chaudhary is there. Do you, you are there. Dr. Uh, uh, Ankush is here, even from the South India people are working. So if they permit, and we are just trying to convince them, basically one of the object, objective which I presented yesterday to the ICMR was that we will try to convince the regulatory body to permit for its use. So these things can be done and I think it may, it will be done within two, three years only. Yeah. Uh, can I ask? Yeah. 
Yes, sure. Dr. Gopalnath has brought out uh, very nicely this point, and it's a very important question because unless something is available commercially, it cannot be used extensively. Yeah. And I think uh, India has a lot of people who are working. And if you pull uh, all the uh, phages which are available, we have a good collection. And also uh, in Hisar, Dr. Taruna is maintaining um, repository. Uh, Dr. Nath is also aware. And uh, where well-characterized phages are stored and they are made available as and when required, though uh, some of them are of veterinary use also. But what I want to say is, I think now is the time that we must get that uh, push from the ICMR and from the go governing uh, government everywhere so that we can really bring out, we are talking so much about antibiotic um, resistance, about the surveillance, but when it comes to giving the treatment, that is where we are slowing down. And I think we made the presentation in the beginning of the year and it is end of the year, we're still waiting for the funds. Yeah, yes. So I think right. uh, with this, uh, you know, series uh, which Urmi has started, we are thankful to you, Urmi. I think we must bring this uh, to, uh, you know, again, reiterate this, that, that we should not delay, we should not, uh, you know, kind of wait for um, for the availability of this page that be to everyone in the in this country and when we have already the expertise available so this is a real uh, you know kind of um, uh, call from all the people who are working on phages and from the society also which dr gopalnath founded so that all of us can jointly work and bring out this um, availability to everyone in india whosoever needs it we need not import from other countries then that is what is our ultimate goal. Thank you. Right, right. And that's what, I mean, these talks perhaps can reach out to the public also and create awareness because a lot of people still don't know, though many of us have been working on it for so long. But uh, so Dr. Gudaraj from Nepal, I think your two questions have been answered. Uh, but he wants to know, did you ever come across phage resistant mutants, mutants appearing while you were giving the course of therapy? Yeah, yeah, this is common phenomena actually. And this is happening all the time, even in vitro also, in vivo also. So what we do is we are keep isolating the bacteria from the patients. And once we get that one, some of them, the, the phases are not working, we immediately change the phase. We are taking the another lytic phase for that one. We replace them. That's why we yes. need to have the phase library. Yeah. Yes. And Dr. Govind Rai has revealed his name. He's very happy and he's very thankful to you that you took uh, he is thanking Professor Nath from bottom of, his, bottom of his heart for the excellent research extended help to us uh, to needy patients, including his mother. So, yeah, yeah, he is the scientist has DBT. So, I just I prefer them. Yeah. yeah, so he has given thank you. Me. Thank you. And now, Preeti wants to ask Will it ever be possible to make a fixed pipeline to make phage uh, to prepare phages and store phages uh, uh, so that? we need to work for personalized phage isolation in order to save time. So it's the same question coming, I think, from the first talk that is there a standard protocol which can be followed and a bank to rely upon so that those phages can be obtained from the bank. And only in extreme cases, we may have to resort to uh, isolate fresh phages. Yeah, that we are trying. That this is the yeah. reason why we should have the phage bank. Yeah. Somebody is asking what's the price of the therapy. <laughs> price yeah. is a question asked by everybody, actually. So how much does it price? Cost, actually? Price actually is, uh, I, I don't think that this is uh, needs much money, actually. This needs time. And the you, need, you know what, what we need are the bacteria which are growing on the artery media. We simply need autoclave, heart air, uh, one heart air oven and the incubator and the refrigerator. The, the issue is that the for the characterization of the phases, whole genome sequencing and electron microscopy. This is really a bit difficult and the, uh, the uh, agencies which are doing this, many often they are not giving the satisfactory result. So this is the issue with right. us. So the, uh, the sequencing facility should be there, there and electron microscopy uh, is really, we are thankful to Dr. Rama who helped us all the time. And we are having the 12 phages with us, which are whole genome sequenced. And we have uh, got many phages where electron microscopy has been done at James New Delhi. Right. But we and need to have... Kokanti also, sorry, please go ahead. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So we need yes, to yes. have 
actually some facility where the whole genome sequencing and uh, the uh, annotation and all these things are done very efficiently and we are having all well characterized phages with us okay thank you yes yeah, so that's why we need these centers which have these facilities so that all of this characterization can be done uh, so dr kalyan is saying again extremely thankful to dr gopalnath uh, he and the tree, uh, he or she is a treating id physician for the first yeah, case yeah. Uh, with he is the person who took the first case yes, and he dared to do this. I am really thankful so, to him. Yeah. The Kuntur case, right? Yeah. Yes, yes. Dr. Ashwini Chauhan uh, from Delhi University, uh, he also has concern about resistance against phages. Uh, so uh, how does it impact in the long run? So Dr. Ashwini, uh, Dr. Gopalnath has already answered that they look for new phages. To replace uh, it, it, it's a dynamic process. It's not like antibiotic that you have isolated one molecule and then you are go, uh, going to the field after 20 years of the continuous research, the phase one, phase two, phase three trials. This is not needed in this case. And uh, the day the bacteria is developing the resistance, next day you can isolate the new phase. So it's a dynamic process. That's why we need to have the networking of the laboratories which are doing the good laboratory practices and having the well-characterized phases. So every day we have to do this. Right. And Karthi Kumar wants to know uh, if we can we use the same type of phages if the patient gets the recurrent infection with same bacteria. So what kind of immune response do you anticipate? Actually, I said that they are basically the uh, commensal flora of the body. That's why usually body is not having the active immune response against these phages. What we have found that this takes 21 days in appearance of some of the neutralizing antibody. And then uh, in acute infection, if the therapy is for 21 days, it's not a problem. For long run, it's like if someday Dr. Ankush is working on tuberculosis. So in that case, if you have to give for the longer duration or chronic infection like chronic prostatitis or uh, chronic typhoid carriers, in that case, you can have the battery of the bacteriophages a good amount, I mean different types with antigenic differences. So one type of antigens, if it is getting neutralized, you are shifting to the bacteriophages which are having antigenically different from the previous one. So we should have to have uh, several types of the cocktails which are antigenically different but lighting. So this answer is there. Uh, Swati Shaw wants to know how many patients have been treated uh, in India by uh, using bacteriophage therapy in approximate number? We have used more than 200. We have tr treated more than 200 cases. So I was there in a column. I was there in column and Dr. Gopalnath was also there. So I think there were claps for him when he showed the images of treated patients and the numbers. So we can't have a virtual clap, but wonderful. Um, so, and then Rishi wants to know uh, that, like you showed in one of the case that there was a severe um, endotoxin release and uh, endotoxin shock. So how can it be minimized uh, in patients once we give fish therapy? Yes, yes. Since the uh, bacteriophages do replicate, this is, this is the, these are the drugs which increase in number after administration. It's not like antibiotic where there is reduction after the administration. So we, what we are doing and we are suggesting, Dr. K.K. Chakravarti is there. Uh, and I suggested that we should start from the minimal dose. Keep watching the changes in the blood pressure and the uh, oxygen saturation. And accordingly, we have to gradually uh, means make it up to the level where it is very safe. So we just have to avoid the sudden release of the endotoxin. So the dose or MOI should not be in such a way that that is going to have the zone phenomena like things and endotoxins are further adding the problem to the patient. So uh, we have tried also in the case in uh, animal models in case of pseudomonas, Klebsiella pneumoniae, Acinodobacter and also in Enterobacter. And the safe dose is 10 power 5. And we suggest that initially we should give very small volume not the 100 microliter or 200 microliter. We maybe we are starting with 10 microliter initially. We are watching the blood pressure and the oxygen saturation. And if it is there, we are monitoring it and gradually keep on increasing. So escalation should be done gradually. And it was done by KK Chakravarti at Control. So this is different from the previous talks where they gave a high dose in the first. Uh, ah, yes, that, that question. I, yeah, I asked that question, but that is very risky. 
clinic on the clinical uh, condition if you see sometimes back, uh, the patient is late in the um, uh, septicemia yeah. condition where the bacterial count will be high and sometimes the matching of the bacterial count and the bacteriophage is so, so in such a way which we can't uh, assess from outside that this is going to release the endotoxin and patient may die so it's better that we are starting from the lower dose and gradually escalating yeah so follow up question the same kanika wants to know she has two questions one have you observed any case where after the phage was administered it initially increased the infection before treating it does that ever happen no 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 you don't see a rise in the bacterial population no it, it, it okay. never happens it never happens okay. it is and only the endotoxin which causes the problem or other toxins released by the lysis of the bacteria that is the only issue and her quest next question is how do you store your phages for long term use and in how many days do you check recheck the viability of your stocks how frequently do you check the viability of it actually that is not needed we are having the lyophilized farm and we know that after lyophilization usually uh, one lag reduction is there so even after one year these lyophilized one were working but the liquid farm uh, at room uh, at 4 degree we are uh, uh, we have seen that it is working for uh, one month and at minus 80 it keeps on working it's not a problem so minus 80 uh, it is as such it is the log reduction is very minimal okay and it is across phages doesn't matter which phage uh, which bacteria they are against across phages yes yes okay so sanjay pandey any challenges you see when you have to scale up phage preparation okay so a lot of questions on phage isolation preparation uh, 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 we we are not facing actually you know uh, if we are we have used the roux bottles for the large surface area and then we are uh, concentrating with the membrane dialysis so if the count is coming say 10 power 11 or 10 power 12 per ml and if you are dilating it to 10 power 5 it becomes in hundreds of the liters so this is and, and we have to use only 100 microliter 200 microliter like this one ml is sufficient so it's not issue so you mean to say once you find your phages matching with the isolate, you can always scale up real time also? Yes, yes. But if it is to be commercially available in batches, then in that case... Uh, uh, for, for that, then we have to have a large scale uh, production system. Yes. yes. Okay. And then this question is on EOP, efficiency of plating. Uh, is there a correlation between efficiency of plating with the ability of phages to impact biofilm formation? In fact, uh, what we are doing that uh, they, they, there is uh, this is not an issue actually. If you keep the bacteria there, in the, we are doing in the microtitle plate for biofilm formation usually. And then uh, we are just testing the different number of the bacteriophages which are disrupting and the time duration also. Because which one is the, uh, the, what is the concentration of the phages which is disrupting and what is the time it is taken. Say if the biofilm is uh, 24 hour old or say 96 hour old or the biofilm is of very recent duration, then what is, what is the optimum number of the bacteriophages which is going to disrupt it. So we are all doing all these things. And we have got very encouraging uh, bacteriophages are doing that one. But there is a very good synergy with the antibiotics. So pass is the very good thing for this. Uh, phase and antibiotic synergy really it works and uh, two last questions uh, sani sharif wants to ask uh, when do you decide to go for maybe you haven't yet or you have uh, when do you decide to go for phase genome engineering uh, actually we are planning and people are doing also we have uh, we are thinking for the phase display also and if needed we are going to delete uh, the um, uh, we create the mutants and we are making the tailor-made phages also, which are uh, divided of all these objectional genes. So uh, if the uh, funding is there, we can start that one. And Dr. Okay. Urdi, you are uh, yourself working on the endo license. So this question Asperger. is for you. <laughs> yeah, perhaps because uh, lytic genes, are sometimes a lot of phages which show activity, but then they are lytic. So uh, they are lysogenic, they show turbidity. So if you find them to be having temperate phages, then I take then I think engineering is the way. What else can be done? But so I, I, you have... I feel the nature is the best answer actually. And if you are having the 
cocktail of three four phases out of one if one is turning to become the lysogenic even then those two three will take care of that one so the host bacteria will not survive so this is this is keep on going in the nature so uh, we can't compete with the natural process we can do something so but i i what i feel that if you are having the very well characterized phase genetically engineered one and introducing to the patient it is going to the host and next day it might be taking some of the genes from the host so that is all possibility and they are not stable these are uh, ultimately they are the viruses like corona covid <laughs> so same thing will happen so we are doing one study in this case. I shall be telling you that we are having the 10 different um, hosts of the bacteria and passing the same virus in all the 10 hosts and looking by the Eric PCR, the changes in the genome. Another, uh, maybe we are going for the sequencing also. One Another is that we are taking the same bacterial host and same phase, we are passaging 10 times, one, one after sequential passage, and we are just looking for the change in the genome of that uh, particular phase. So that will be done very soon because we are about to finish this work within a month. Right. We need to study this whole yeah. evolution. So what is happening last, actually it is going yeah. to the yeah. Right. And uh, last question I would take this as the last question. Uh, how many countries are allowing phage therapy for commercial use? I think it's uh, you are the best one to answer this <laughs> because we are all the time. <laughs> actually, Swati, uh, what I know is that commercially, uh, the East Europe has been doing it for years. Like uh, our next talk, knock, next talk is from uh, East Adiyawa. Europe only, yeah. in our fish therapy center. In other countries, what I know in in Belgium also, this uh, they have allowed magistral preparation to be used. Uh, so Belgium and several East European countries are doing. In West, in the South, uh, in sorry USA and UK, they have begun with compassionate therapy. So they are pretty much in. Uh, the FDA is in loop and they keep getting permission and uh, in case of uh, Australia also we saw that within the hospital uh, they have they have planned um, come up with a protocol and they are delivering pages but it's not gone all commercial yet because it needs to be scaled up so I think everybody is right now into clinical trials and unless we have data from clinical trials I don't think uh, any country will go um, absolutely uh, uh, in commercial mode. We need that data for sure that uh, yeah. everybody is doing. So we see many clinical trials going on in UK, US and Australia and uh, hopefully in India also soon. Uh, I think that is uh, how it is. But in East Europe, yes, they have been practicing and it's approved in Russia, in Georgia, in uh, Tbilisi, in Georgia and uh, Poland. These countries are doing page therapy since a long time and in Belgium also now. Wonderful. So I think uh, excellent uh, uh, question answer session and uh, we have very fantastic uh, participation. Good number of people are here to hear you and I think everybody learned and got a lot of answers. So if I summarize, people are concerned about where you get your phages from, which is the best method to have them, how to store them, how important are phage banks. And I hear that not just from speakers, uh, but also from the participants. Uh, that there is a need for phage library. So it's building Dr. up, you know, we have Dr. to talk about Dr. Urmi, one thing I would like to add. Ah, yes, please. Sure. So initially we went to isolate the, uh, collected the Ganges water because we were uh, taught that the it is the river water Ganges is very rich in that one. So in case of staph aureus, we failed. Then we came to our sewer water of our own hospital. And then later on, we when we just tried to find out the go, we wanted to test the go mutra also because people were telling that that is very sacred and self you know, non putrefying and uh, very useful for the health conditions so what we did we isolated the bacteriophages against the almost all the gut bacteria uh, in the uh, cow uh, urine and then also then we went for testing we got there also then we came down to the human being now uh, mostly our students are isolating these bacteriophages from the urine sample submitted to our lab, uh, laboratory for the culture sensitivity. So this is the case. So this is the source. Basically, we are the source of these bacteriophages. So we need not to go to the sewer and to the river water. Thank you. Right, right. Yeah, but then there'll always be a difference in the environmental phages and clinical phages. So the, yeah. the source is uh, a clinical uh, specimen or is it environment? We need to study. There must be huge variation amongst those. 
So in short, phages are where bacteria are. So we know that where all we find bacteria in humans and animals everywhere in all the ecosystems. So with that, I thank everyone so much for if anybody has a question to ask uh, and we can unmute you or else I think it's dinner time in India for sure in Asia. So thank you all so much for joining and wonderful uh, presentation, Dr. Gopalna. Thank you so much for taking out your time yes. and uh, all the participants for being here and asking questions and uh, taking genuine interest, which I think serves the purpose of the series. So I thank you all so much. And I thank uh, my team, uh, Ritu and Kanika for managing and um, all the, uh, everybody else, everyone. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you one and all thank for you. your patience listening. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. Bye-bye. Bye. Oh, my God.